Well, graduates, we are so proud of you and of all that you have achieved. You each have a great future ahead of you if you will make the right choices and the right decisions in life. Yes, the world is getting darker in these last days, but as followers of Christ, we are to walk in the light as he is in the light. We are to let our light shine. We are to shine like the stars in heaven. Graduates, today you shine brightly. But whether you shine brightly at the end of your life and whether you shine brightly in eternity depends on the choices and the decisions you make in this life. The world has many definitions of success. But if you pursue success the world's way, and by the world's standards, you will lose your very soul. And so it is a choice. It is a decision whether or not you will live for the Lord and do things God's way, or whether you will do things the world's way. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 26, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? How would I define success from God's perspective? From the perspective of the Word of God, which is the Bible. It's living a life that pleases God. It's living a life that is worthy of the kingdom of God. It's living a life that puts to good use the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that God has blessed you with. It's hearing Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. It's spending eternity in the city of God with your loved ones and family, your children and grandchildren. Yes, success is necessary in life, but we must define success God's way, not the world's way. Success without God is not success. Success without someday spending eternity in the city of God is not success. Success without family is not success. Success without love and joy and peace is not success. Success without honor is not success. Success without character, integrity, and morality is not success. Success without being able to sleep at night is not success. Again, Jesus said in Matthew 16, 26, what, what, what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul. Graduates, I know that many of you are accomplished athletes and you like to win. The most important endeavor is life and eternity, and it is not a game. The Apostle Paul said that he did not run or live aimlessly, but he lived, he ran his race in such a way so that after preaching to others, he himself would not be disqualified for the prize. What good is it to live this life decade after decade to only lose in the end, to only forfeit in the end, to forfeit your very soul? Success without God is not success. Success without God is not success. God has given all of you gifts, talents, and abilities. And I challenge you graduates to put your gifts, talents, and abilities to good use, not just for yourself, but for the kingdom of God and for others. Don't waste your life. Don't waste the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that God has blessed you with. In the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25, the master who represents Father God gives talents to three different men. These talents each represent a large economic sum, perhaps the total value of what God entrusts to us over the course of an entire lifetime. Matthew 25 and verse 15, to one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents of money, to another one talent, each according to his ability. We do not all have the same abilities. And some of us have more abilities, but we all do have ability. I said we all do have ability, and we all have talents 
distributed to us by God, each according to our ability, our God-given ability. Yes, these talents each represent a large economic sum, perhaps the total value of what God entrusts to us over an entire lifetime. But these talents also rep represent the gifts, talents, and abilities that God gives to us to use and to use well, not just for ourselves, but for the kingdom of God and for others. Over the course of time, the man with five talents put his money to work and he gained five more. The man with two talents gained two more. So the first two men doubled God's investment in them. They doubled God's investment. In verse 21, Jesus tells the man who doubled his five talents. And then in verse 23, Jesus tells the man who doubled his two talents, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So we see that God judges. We see that God evaluates. We see that God rewards good stewardship. But what about the one talent man? Verse 18, the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Notice the talent, the gifting, the ability, the money. It wasn't his. It was the master's. It was the Lord's. It wasn't his to do with as he wanted. God expects a return on his investment. God expects a return on his investment in us. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Verse 24 then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. Notice the one talent man takes no responsibility. And notice the one talent man is an excuse maker. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. Look at the response of the Lord. Look at the response of God. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. What is that? That is the bare minimum. Now, interest is a bit more today in 2023, but anyone that deals with banks and accounts knows that over the last few years, it hasn't been so exciting. And you open an account and put money in, and the interest is very minimal. That is the bare minimum. Sadly, in life, too many people don't even do the bare minimum, like showing up on time or early, doing a good job, and not clocking out or leaving until the work's done. Sadly, they're the one talent man or the one talent woman. Verse 28, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now notice this is the kingdom of God. It's not the world. In the world right now, because of what has gone on in America's schools and universities the past few decades, there are those that want redistribution from the successful to those that haven't worked hard. That is the world. But notice in the kingdom of God, God rewards good stewardship and he redistributes from those who do nothing and who aren't good stewards to those that are good stewards for the kingdom of God. The one talent man did nothing with what God entrusted to him. Not only did he have nothing to show for his life, he lost his soul. Jesus said, throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The one talent man did not even do the bare minimum 
that life requires. And he lost his soul. We live in one of the laziest generations there has ever been. Just this past week, I asked a young man, just a couple of years older than me, what he was doing, what he was busy with. And he told me that he was retired because his wife makes a good amount of money. I'm telling you, there's coming a day the righteous will stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat and we will have to present to him and lay before him what we did with our lives, with our gifts, our talents, and our abilities. And there's coming a day the wicked, the unrighteous will stand before Father God at the great white throne judgment and they too will have to give an account. What did you do with your life? What did you do with the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that I gave you. The one talent man did not even do the bare minimum that life requires, and he lost his soul. The one talent man had nothing to show God for his life, his time, his work, his effort, and he lost his soul. You can have nothing and lose your soul. But as Jesus told us, you can also gain the whole world and yet still lose your soul. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 26, what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? You may not have as many gifts, abilities, or talents as the next man or woman, but don't be the one talent man. Don't waste your life. Graduates, don't waste the gifts, the talents, the abilities God has given you. Don't waste your life. Put the gifts, the abilities, the talents that God has given you to good work. Double God's investment in you. Double your parents' investment in you. Have something to show for your life. Have something worthy and honorable to present to Jesus at his judgment seat. Don't be the one talent man who loses his soul, but also don't be the man or woman who seems to gain the whole world and yet you lose your very soul. You can have nothing and lose your soul, but you can also gain the whole world and still lose your soul. The wicked will be judged at the great white throne judgment, and the Bible describes both the small and the great being there. Many one-talent men and women whose names were never known, and many who gained the whole world, yet they lost their souls, and they will be judged together there at the great white throne judgment. Now, I thought long and hard and prayed about today's message. It's for y'all. Everybody else is just listening in. And I asked the Lord, what would he have me say to you? A thousand years from now, all that will matter is that you and your family and your loved ones are in the city of God. That's all that will matter. Live this life with eternity in mind. We're young, but time is passing away. And soon each of us will be in eternity, with God or separated from him forever. A thousand years from now, all that will matter is whether we, our family, our loved ones, are in the city of God. So live this life with eternity in mind. With all that the government has done and with all this inflation, graduates, you don't just need to make a living. You gotta succeed, you gotta prosper. To have even what your parents have, you're going to have to work that much harder. You need to succeed and prosper that much more. But far more important, you need to maintain your Christian faith. You need to maintain your integrity. You need to maintain your principles. You need to maintain the values your parents raised you with, the values of the kingdom of God. That's the God kind of success. Yes, we have need of things. And yes, we need money to provide those things. Due to inflation, everything costs more. Yet what did Jesus tell us? Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things 
will be given to you as well. Religion will tell you that if you serve God, you'll do without. That's a lie. Our Heavenly Father knows that we have need of things. Jesus said he knows what we have need of even before we ask. Live for him with all your heart, and he will take care of you. He will wonderfully provide for you. My life's verse has been Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give unto you the desires of your heart. God has given you gifts, talents, and abilities. God has given all of us many gifts, like family. The young people, graduates, other young people here, if you believe the lies of this wicked culture, which now change every day, if you believe the lies of this wicked culture, and if you head down wrong, sinful, selfish roads, you will miss out on the joys and the gifts God has been made available to us. You'll miss out on those gifts, the joy of the Christian life, the abundant life in this life and the life to come. You'll miss out on the joy of Christian community, being a part of the church, the body of Christ, the community of believers, the fellowship of the righteous, those that Revelation says keep their garment of white, their robe of salvation pure in this wicked and dark world. You'll miss out on the joy of marriage. You'll miss out on the joy of family. You'll miss out on the joy of children, the joy of this life extending beyond your own, the joy, the joy of one day being with your family and children and loved ones in the city of God. Success is not just success in one area of life. Success is God's best in every area of life. Success, true success, is God's best in every area of life. Jesus warned us in Matthew 7, beginning in verse 13, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Proverbs 14, verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. Jesus said in Matthew 7, beginning in verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does. Now, I know many Christians, and they love the Lord. They don't believe action is important. They don't believe obedience is important. They don't believe that what we do is important. Jesus said we'll be judged for what we do. Jesus said we'll be judged for what we say. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, beginning in verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does, only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's not just about what we believe. It's about what we do and what we do in this life and what we do in this world and whether we walk the straight and narrow when so many are headed to the broad, they're headed down the broad road that leads to destruction. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. You go to Revelation chapter 22 and you read about the city of God and how wonderful it is and how beautiful it is and how glorious it is. But then there's a list of those that are outside the city of God. Who doesn't make it? Who doesn't spend eternity with God? Who has no place in the city of God. Jesus makes it simple in Matthew 7 and verse 23. Those who are evil doers. Success is not just success in one area of life. And success is not success by the world's standards. Success is finishing this life, whether young, whether old, and then hearing Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. As Jesus exhorted the church in the seven letters of Revelation, 
Success is overcoming. Success is overcoming until the end. Success is being faithful, being faithful even until the end. Success is living the life God has called you to live. Success is being who God has called you to be. Success is faithfully letting your light shine no matter how dark this world becomes. Success is taking the gifts, the talents, and the abilities that God has given you and using them and employing them and doing so well, putting them to work. Success is living this life and then at the end, having something worthwhile to show for your time, your labor, your effort, your decisions. Success is living this life and then at the end, having something worthwhile to lay down at the feet of Jesus. Not wood or hay or stubble, but gold, silver, something that lasts, something that endures. In Colossians, Paul exhorts believers to live lives that are worthy. This tells us by definition that there are those, and even though Jesus went to the cross for them, even though he died for them, even though he did all that he did for them, and even though they have received what Jesus did, they don't live a life worthy of what Jesus did on their behalf. They don't live a life worthy of the kingdom of God. They don't live a life worthy of the word of God. Paul tells us in Colossians, he exhorts believers to live lives that are worthy. Graduates, live a life worthy of all that God has done for you. Live a life worthy of all that your parents and family have invested in you. Live a life worthy of the education you have received and every advantage that you have been given. Live a life worthy worthy. Many of your parents have sacrificed so much for you to be here at St. Paul's. Don't waste that investment. Not only give the Lord a return, give your parents a return. Give your family a return on their investment. Live a life that is worthy. Live a life worthy of this wonderful education you've received. Live a life worthy of God and the kingdom of God. As the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1, live to please God. We live in a time when many don't. So I say it again, live to please God. Today, you might be a family member of one of these graduates or a visitor, and perhaps you don't know God. You don't have a relationship with God. Time is short and eternity is upon us. I would challenge you, repent of your sins. Ask Jesus to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. As Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name by which men and women can be saved. As Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Finally, graduates, in this life, there will be challenges. There will be difficulties. There will be circumstances to overcome. But never forget, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you will not grieve the Holy Spirit, but will instead be led by the Holy Spirit, he will lead you to green pastures and still waters. He will lead you into all truth and understanding. Ask the Lord for wisdom in every decision of life, and he will give you wisdom. He will direct your path. Proverbs 2, beginning in verse 7, says, he holds victory in store for the upright. For who? Austin, I thought it's 2023, and I thought the Lord does the same thing for everyone, no matter what they do. Read your Bible. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless. He guards the course of the just. He protects the way of his faithful ones. Yes, along the way there will be challenges, there will be difficulties, there will be disappointments, there will be temptations. There will be opportunities to cheat, to lie, to steal. 
There will be opportunities to take shortcuts to do what is wrong. People will fail you. People will let you down. People will disappoint you. But I'm here to tell you, God will always be faithful. God will always be faithful. Jesus told us in John 16, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Graduates, know that in life's darkest moments, the Lord is always with you. Know that we are always here for you. In life, there are tough times. But as Robert Schuller once said, tough times never last, but tough people do. No matter the temptation, no matter Satan's lies, no matter what any worldly person may say to you to get you off course, know you are never alone. The Lord says to all of us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. As this world gets increasingly dark, being the light will sometimes be lonely. As darkness abounds, being the light will sometimes be lonely. But praise God as the darkness abounds, God gives us grace to endure. When so many do what's wrong and you do what's right, there are times when you will feel like you are alone, but you are never alone because the Lord is with you. The Lord loves you. The Lord is for you. And his desire is that you experience his best, not just in this life, but in eternity. So never quit, never give up, no matter how that practice goes or no matter how that college class and your least favorite subject goes. Don't quit, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. The Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 6, verse 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. And our heart's desire for each of you is what the Apostle John wrote in 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Graduates, I challenge you today to shine like stars, because that is what you are in this dark world. Shine like stars, shine like stars, shine like stars, and carry out and live out the will of God. And if you'll do that, you'll shine in this life, and you'll shine in eternity.